Today we're looking at the user interface and navigation of Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. If you're new to Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad or if you're coming from Affinity Photo 1, this is the video for you because this video is really me walking you through, giving you a bit of a tour of the user interface, showing you how a lot of things work. There's going to be tips, there's going to be tricks along the way. I think you're going to enjoy it, so let's get into it. Here we are back inside Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad and first of all, down the left hand side, we've got all our tools. And these are the main tools that we're going to be using in Affinity Photo 2, like Photoshop and other packages. Most of them's pretty standard. We're on the hand tool, which just moves us around our canvas. The move tool, which if we've got a layer selected, we can move that layer. Always in Affinity Photo 2, two fingers will undo and three fingers will redo. And that's a brilliant shortcut. We've got others here. We've got the color picker. And simply, if we just click on it, we can choose any color we want. Kind of the, the Starbucks green there, though it's a wee bit dark here. We can maybe pick the color of this blue sky. Yeah, anything is a color picker. So I suppose anything you go over is going to pick that color. We've got the crop tool. And we'll maybe go into a lot of these tools more in detail. There's Smart selection tool is a brilliant tool just for selecting subjects uh, very quickly. Flood, rectangular, and you can see as I move down, there's two things that happens when you click on the tool. So say we click on the pen tool, you will see that the top toolbar here changes to give us new options. And there's also a slider on the left hand side. And for instance, if we go into the, the brush tool again, the top menu changes in relation to the tool we're on. And there's a few more sliders down the left hand side. Uh, if you tap on it, you'll see this is the width. So this is the width of our brush. And you can see here, hopefully in YouTube, okay. You can see the width's changing and that's we visual representation of how big our brush is going to be. If there's a dot in one of these sliders, that means if you tap on it, it brings up another another slider. In this case, it's the hardness of this brush. So that's a very soft brush. Again, two fingers done do. And if we put it back to the very top, you'll see that the edges are very hard. And again, there's a dot here. That's the opacity. So that's something just to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is on this brush tool, you'll see an arrow at the bottom corner, the same as this eraser brush. So we can just click on that and we can erase whatever we want two fingers to undo. Or if we just tap on it, you'll see the other option that comes up. And in this case, it's background erase. If we go down to the clone brush again, just tap for a second or even if you tap and hold, it'll also come up and we've got clone brush, healing, pass, blemish, and painting. Lots of brilliant tools. So that just expands the amount of options that we can fit in this toolbar. And again, we'll go through these tools on another video and break them down maybe one by one. And we'll look into all that it can do. Most of them self-explanatory, but we will go into them. If we come up here to the top toolbar, again, as I said, depending on what tool you click on, we've got a toolbar that will change up here. And if you're coming from Affinity Photo 1, this toolbar used to be down here. Here, the contextual toolbar used to be down at the at the bottom and that made the iPad version of Affinity Photo different from the desktop version. On the desktop version, all these toolbars are up here and it's, it's very much like Photoshop if you're coming from a Photoshop background. So Affinity Photo 2 is a big update in that respect of the navigation UI because they've, they've kind of made it more consistent with the desktop version and that's really good. If you're if you're coming from the desktop version to the iPad, it's just a it's not as steep as a learning curve as it was before. Another thing that's brilliant if you're coming from Affinity Photo 1 is the personas. If I say the word persona, if you're coming from a Photoshop background, you're going, what's a persona, Andrew? A persona really is Affinity Photo's workspaces. So we're in the photo persona. And if we click the Affinity Photo logo here, it'll tell us what persona we're in. We've got the photo persona. And in the last version on the iPad, there used to be a photo and a selections persona. And if you watch any of my old videos, you'll see me jumping in between those two personas an awful lot. It's brilliant now to combine these two personas into one so we can make our selections and our changes all in the one photo persona. And it streamlines my work and your work so, so, so much. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant update of what they've done there. Other personas, Liquify. If I click into Liquify, this here is pretty good. And we'll do a tutorial about Liquify. And Liquify is really good. Liquify, normally when celebrities on Instagram or other social media, sometimes they can use the Liquify brush to, what would you say, 
enhance their figure or change their figure if you know what i mean a few fingers or a few double tap to undo so liquify can get a bit of a bad name depending on how you use it but it's it's brilliant and it's something i use especially when i'm doing my creative posters liquify is good because sometimes sometimes you do want to do a wee bit of pushing and pulling and maybe maybe changing things and there's there's different reasons for that not always for social media and to, to make people's shapes different and all that and i'll say no more about that another persona is develop and i'm not in the develop persona too much but uh we'll 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 look at that i keep saying we're going to look at this in other videos this is just a quick rundown to the user interface and navigation of affinity photo but you'll notice something that every persona these toolbars change so we're in the develop if we go back to liquify all these toolbars change we're going to talk about studios over here affinity photo calls these studios and you'll see that these icons change the studios change the toolbars change depending on what persona you're in this is a tone mapping one again tone mapping's not a persona that i would be in very often either and an export persona too but the main persona that i'm in this photo i go into liquify and if i'm being honest develop tone mapping export i'm really not in these much uh, at all so we'll go back to persona next to persona we've got these three lines if we click these three lines this is really our document sentence we can do different things orientation resize it flatten export print place lots of different kind of document settings really there these three dots here is our edit menu and we can duplicate copy paste merge, restorize, lots of different things in here. The next icon here is for selections. And again, this is really part of what makes Affinity Photo 2 a big update from Affinity Photo 1 on the iPad. The selections, because they've, as I, as I touched on, they've rolled in the photo and personas selection into one. And this is brilliant. When you're making a selection, we can go in here and we can feather it and grow or shrink the selection and we'll do lots of great things here. Uh, the rest of the menu is pretty plain up here. Again, on left we go into these settings these toolbars will fill up a magnifying icon as you would guess zooms in and out on your artwork there's a little line beside it a little menu beside it and you can see we can zoom to fit zoom to width we can zoom to fit then we can zoom to selection if there's a selection we can zoom in to 800 ah, whoa absolutely massive there we are and in the Finley photo two two fingers will move around the canvas and you can pinch out or you can pinch in and that will zoom out pinch in to zoom in and you can also use two fingers to rotate the canvas another great thing is if you're if you're mucking about and you want to get it back if you tap on zoom to fit obviously it'll zoom to fit but if we zoom in and we're, we're working we're maybe wanting to take out the trademark no don't take out the trademark symbol but uh, if we're wanting to work on something instead of zooming out with your hands which is very handy if we're zoomed in just a quick tap and that'll bring it back to zoom to fit another tip here not to go into it too much but if we click zoom to width and it'll zoom in to the width of our project if we're in the same location it remembers our last action assume to fit so if we click the magnifying glass assume to fit so that's really nice so it does remember say if we go 100 percent which is close to zoom to width so we'll go to 200 and again i could zoom in up here tap here and that puts it back to 200 percent. so that's why normally i click zoom to fit and then anytime i want very quickly just to tap that icon and it goes back brilliant feature that i use an awful lot and to be honest when you're doing youtube tutorials it's really handy because it's a quick way just to bring the artwork back the next icon here if we tap on the right hand side this is where we can set up margins and guides and grids we'll maybe go into guide settings and we'll click guide settings again we'll, we'll look at this in another video because there's there's quite a bit of information in here we can simply just set a guide and you can maybe see that guide in the middle or the red line going horizontal we can add a vertical line going down you can certainly see it more going down the ways on that blue and we can hide it or simply by tapping on the icon itself you can show or hide those and that's that's great we'll talk about grids the next icon is a magnet and that is snapping and if i click on the move tool if you're on a layer you'll see these green lines appear and that means it's snapped in the middle and you can go up and that just snaps my photo 
into the measurement and I'll bring another layer in just to show you another example of snapping. So I'll bring up the dock, I'll bring up my folders icon and we've got the old Starbucks logo. So I'm just going to click and drag it and it's nearly the, the right size. I'll just click that window away and we can make it big or small, but you can see it will snap it vertically and horizontally and that's in the exact middle of the document and we can scroll down and this is good if we're using lots of layers we'll just replace oh two fingers again to undo i clicked the wrong layer there we'll just i'll not spend too much time but well this is a little a little too big and again i could zoom out or just tap the magnifying glass and that looks too big and too silly but uh the reason why this is set up just out of curiosity if you're wondering, I'm doing YouTube shorts, daily YouTube shorts at the minute. And this is one of my YouTube shorts. In one minute, I challenge myself to get rid of this logo, put in this logo and try to make it blend in to the, the picture more. So check out my YouTube shorts if you haven't already done so to see how this turned out. And we'll maybe actually look at this in another tutorial in more detail because a minute goes very, very quick. And uh, I would like to dive deeper into this tutorial and it's very he easy and if you check out the results I think it's very impressive too. So back to snapping. So if we click on our move tool that's it snapped horizontally there and we can snap it vertically or snap it to the edges and there's lots of options there. We'll just put it roughly back in the middle. This toolbar is really nice if you just want to clear all the toolbars and that's really nice. We'll just tap to get rid of the markings around that layer. And sometimes that's just nice just to sit back and look at an uncluttered workspace. And I use that the odd time. As I said earlier on, down the left hand side, all these are what Affinity Photo call studios. The first and arguably more imp most important studio is the layer studio. And we've got two layers here. We can tap on the background layer and see in our move tool is selected, we can move it. We can tap on this one and move it two fingers again to undo. If you want to select both layers, we can just by selecting one layer and then dragging your finger left to right and you can see both these layers are now selected and we can move them and scale them in and do lots of weird stuff. Two fingers to bring it back to where we had it. There's other things. If you click the plus icon, this is where we can do masks and other things. If you click these three dots, if we click on this Starbucks logo, if we click these three dots, we can change the file name. We can just click on this image.png and we'll just type in logo. Okay. That changes the file name. If we click the layer options back, you can see logo, background, back into these three dots. We can change the opacity. So that's the logo before and then that's over. We can make this visible or not. We can lock this layer. So now there's, we can't, can't select this layer. We can't do anything about it. Selecting the background layer. If we, if we hit back, you'll see that's selected two fingers again to undo. And you can also see there's a lock icon now, and that means we can't do anything here. If we click into these three dots, we'll take that away. And then this is quite nice for solo. Not too important when you've got two layers, but if you're doing lots of lots of artwork, and sometimes there's so many layers you want to focus on one thing it's nice just to solo it there's other options here and you can tag your layers if you want why am i tagging it red tag it green andrew so if we go back you'll see there's a green mark and that's quite nice if you want to organize your layers and there'll be a video going into layers in more detail we can delete it hit one back we can select these two group it and again rename that and this icon here can merge and rasterize and do lots of good stuff too. A lot, lot more information we'll go into but we'll just go down to the next studio which is the color studio and every color or every studio we'll go into it tells you the name at the top. Layers, color, brushes, spoiler, brushes is coming next. So the color studio and this is really nice again we've got this color picker that we had over here this is another way of picking our color and we've got a color wheel here or we can change to the hue, saturation, lightness sliders, different RGB. We'll go across lots of different sliders. The color wheel is my favorite one. And again, we're going to do swatches down here and other things. As we said, you can go to brushes, basic brushes. And another great thing about Affinity Photo, if there's anywhere where there's menu options like this, you can obviously go right and left. Or if you just tap in the middle, you can scroll down 
and quickly go to say the inks and you can see the brushes another nice way about this which i forgot to show you in the layer studio sorry go into logo go into the three dots and here we've got another one where we can change the blending modes so again we can go right and we can go left and it's changed in the layer mode or we can tap into it and just quickly maybe we know straight away a saturation we want or something different we can tap into it or again go left and right just tap into it and go back to normal and that's a really nice feature again we'll go to brushes anywhere we, there's a menu left or right tap into it or we're going to make a quick selection moving on down the adjustment studios brilliant amount of adjustments and the great thing about the adjustment studio as you can see you can get a wee sneak preview of what would happen in that adjustment so if i tap that the gradient map you can see mad stuff happening two fingers done do but it is nice if you're not quite sure what adjustments might be made it gives you a nice quick preview there's recolor this makes it look all red obviously a lot to talk about here hopefully you can start to see how powerful a thinly photo 2 on the ipad is and we're just scratching the surface we're, we're going into things a little here but it's such a powerful application you can tell why i like using it you can tell that i get excited or hopefully you can tell i get excited by it we'll go down to the next studio filters again absolutely tons of filters there's a preset called live filters and really what live filters let me click into live filters what live filters does is we can we'll scroll down to say mesh warp we can warp and i'm doing a horrible job here but we can warp this image and then maybe go away from the image and come back to it and double tap on it and we can warp it again whereas if you don't have live filters on once you warp the image that's it pixelated that's it stayed you can't go back and muck about and change it and live filters is good and there's a few powerful live filters again two fingers to undo all this the next mode layer effects layer effects brilliant it's brilliant when you're working with text and you can add bevel and emboss and gradients and strokes or outlines as it's called we'll just maybe click on the outline and again the two sliders coming up on the left hand side you'll see the bar changing at the top even though it's selected nothing's happening because we need to turn it on and if we change the color we'll use our color picker and we'll make it green and down here we'll just increase this and we can do something really ridiculous like that and muck about with that we don't want to make it look anything like that and oh, there it looks interesting i'd bring it down even more i wouldn't even use it in this in this case but uh, you can see how you can add text or we can hide that do a what will we do we'll do an outer shadow and again just bring up our again you can move it or you can even move your finger which is really nice just to get in there that's a great thing about working on the ipad you can just if something's not quite working for you and it's, it's too fiddly just move your finger to, finger it doesn't even need to move on the drop shadow it can move anywhere on the canvas and you can just get in there and just put it the exact point where you want and you can turn it off and it remembers it it'll remember if we go back to outline the outline that we had that's layer effects and there's brilliant effects in it text once we're working with text this is let me see if we just if we hit the text tool lovely thing about the text tool is once we click and drag you can see a preview of how big the text you want in so we'll just type in starbucks and we're going to bring that down and it doesn't look great it's not the right font we can do lots of different things here we've got styles we've got the font if we click into the font we've got uh indiana jones look at that and there's class there doesn't it starbucks in the Indiana Jones font. And I, I strangely like that. It looks a bit DuckTalesies, doesn't it? Uh, as well as Indiana Jones. But uh, so you can you can change the font here. We can go into all these settings. You can see little arrows pointing in and more arrows. There's just so many options. Again, we'll look at this on another video. The amount of options is unbelievable. We'll maybe hide this there. And again, just by hiding the layer, clicking the dot, and that will hide the layer and while i'm here we can reorder layers by tapping and bringing the layers up as we bonus tips i wasn't even going to do this but uh, that's just how to how to reorder layers so we'll move on down metadata really not in this much 
Uh, I think the last time I was in this was when I'd done the last tutorial on Affinity Photo 1, never in metadata. Channels, sometimes in this. Transform, sometimes it'll be in Transform. It's quite good when, if we click into, and that's another quick tip there. If you want to select a layer, you can just tap on that layer and say we're going into Layer Studio. You'll know that I've tapped on the background because the blue line appears. I've tapped in this logo and there's an anchor point. I can scale this now from the middle. Two fingers done do. Just zoom in on a wee bit. I can rotate it around the top there. That's, it's really good fun to, to play with. It's like a wee animation just coming nicely into place. If you're wanting to flip things very quickly, if you want to rotate, and you can also rotate by clicking on this white dot. And if you tap one finger down or hold one finger down, it'll rotate it in increments of 15. So I'll bring that back to where we had it before. Two fingers again to undo. And the next studio down, navigation. Navigation, I don't use at all because with two fingers, you can move around your canvas so much easier. Click the magnifying glass and it zooms in. So navigation, I'm never in this because of this tool now, because of the zooming in, zooming out, clicking on the magnifying glass. Really this here for me doesn't get used at all. Macros, we'll go into that in another time. That's like shortcuts, assets. We've got no assets. Uh, all these at the bottom, I'm nearly not in. Pixel Bay, that's for images, bringing in images. We've got the resource manager and also the history. The nice thing about the history is we can go back to our Starbucks logo here just by tapping on it or at different points. If we go way up, we can look at the, this is a different blending mode. Is it bad? Yep, the different blending modes. Go back to where we are now, or you can use this slider to go to the very start or somewhere in between. And it's nearly like a time lapse, this slider. And this here question mark is very handy. It's very handy for me when I'm doing YouTube tutorials. If I forget the name of something, you can see the name of all these tools down the left hand side, right hand side. Information in the middle is the information at the top. The only two things we've left to do is if I click on this Starbucks layer, there's a recycling bin or trash bin down here. We're tapping it and that's deletes a, la a layer. So that's a quick way of deleting a layer. Two fingers done do. When also the same trash bin, recycling bin is up here. Where I'm from, Northern Ireland, it's called a recycling bin uh, in many other parts of the world. It's trash, I believe. So that's two interchangeable words there. Two fingers done do. So that's a quick menu. The other is this back button. Simply click this and it will go to our previous projects and I'll click back into my current project. So that's just a quick way of going back. And the final thing is if we hold down one finger just for a second or two and let go, it'll bring this sub menu, which is handy for copying and paste for deselecting selections, or at least this is what I use it mostly for. You can solo layers, you can group layers, duplicate layers. So that's just by tapping one finger, that menu will appear. If you don't want any of the options, just tap anywhere in the canvas or with three fingers, just drag three fingers down and it will also appear. Sometimes you use one finger, sometimes you use three. And I think that's us for the navigation and UI of a Findy Photo 2 on the iPad. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully now you can really understand the user interface a bit more. You can understand the power of this brilliant, brilliant app. We're really just scratching the surface. There's so much more to learn. There's other videos that I've done which will get you up and running and a few different things. There's lots more videos to come. So please subscribe if you're interested in learning more about this brilliant app. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.